Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience and I'm here tonight with my full review of the LSA Hyperdrive 2 headphone amp. And um, I just realized that it's been four months since I did my first impressions of this amp and um, it was actually two months ago that I was a day or two away from doing my uh, full review and that's when I got hit with Bell's palsy and if you've been watching my video you know that uh, I'm still trying to recover from that and this is the first <clears throat> full review I've done since then it's been eight weeks now and I would say I'm maybe about 40 to 50 percent recovered as far as uh, the movement in my face because I was um, at a point where I lost 100% of, of uh, my muscle control on the right side of my face. So please bear with me. Um, I still, uh, my muscles get tired pretty quick. And if I, if I feel like I'm starting to slur my words, I will uh, take a break in the middle of this video. But anyway, um, like I said, this is my first full <clears throat> review. I did some... Um, best of the year videos since then but um, the full reviews are a little bit tougher so I did have to put this off a little while anyway uh, this amp is um, a hybrid tube type amp and uh, uses tubes in the input stage and its solid state in the output stage and um, this was loaned to me for review by LSA which stands for living sound audio and uh, has a retail price of $999, but it currently sells for, it's still an introduction price of $799, and that does include shipping, I think, to anywhere. Um, this is a headphone amp and a preamp, and it uses two E88CC tubes in the input stage both for the headphone amp and the preamp section of it. Uh, the headphone output stage uses uh, Texas Instruments TPA 6120A2 monolithic headphone amps and the uh, preamp stage uses Texas Instruments OPA 1656 um, op amps. This uh, unit has three RCA single-ended inputs on the rear and two RCA single-ended preamp outputs on the rear. And then on the front it has one 6.3 millimeter uh, single-ended headphone output. It also has three gain settings which are activated or controlled by a toggle switch on the front and you have a choice of either 0, 6, or 12 decibels of gain. It is rated at 2 watts per channel into um, 32 ohms. That's a headphone part of the headphone amp part of this unit. And it has a total harmonic distortion of 0.002% at 500 milliwatts. It uses an external 24 volt DC power supply and um, it has a size of 8.5 inches wide by 10.5 inches deep and uh, 4.2 inches high. And if I remember correctly, it weighs in at 7.5 pounds. So uh, we'll try to give you a closer look at it here. And um, this thing's got some pretty good weight to it. It feels very substantial, the build of it. I did want to mention that the chassis or the case is uh, all aluminum. And uh, on the front here, you have your power button. You have your three input selections. And um, if you push one, it turns off the others. So you, you got a separate button for each one. You've got a toggle switch for your three uh, gain control settings. You've got a pretty nice uh, volume knob here hooked up to an ALPS uh, potentiometer. And then you've got a locking 6.3 millimeter headphone jack on the front. You can see your tubes on the top here. And then 
On the rear, you've got your three sets of RCA single-ended inputs and your two sets of um, RCA single-ended preamp outputs. And then this is where your external power supply plugs in. And I forgot to bring that out, um, but you can see it on my first impressions video of this. And you can see, um, Nothing on the bottom, you don't have, you know, I've reviewed a couple of amps lately that your gain control settings are on the bottom and you had like four of them and this is real nice because you've got um, just one toggle switch here on the front, but I really like the way this thing looks. It's got kind of an unusual look, kind of an industrial look and I really do like it. I think it's a very cool looking amp. So anyway, um... As far as equipment I've used doing my review of this and I had pretty much had my review done two months ago and like I said I was about two, way, two days away from doing the review and you know you know the whole story I got hit by Bell's palsy and really set me back and by the time I got back to this I pretty much had to start over with my review as far as doing comparisons to really remember how it worked out and I did compare this to um, I believe four other amps so um, but as far as my equipment I used uh, CD transport as my source and mostly used the topping D70S MQA version uh, DAC uh, as my um, you know DAC is my digital to analog conversion into this amp and as far as headphones, I used a pretty uh, large variety, several different Hi-Fi Man headphones, all the way from the um, for SE, um, I'm sorry, the HE400 SE, which is uh, their budget headphone at about $109. Uh, low price sounds good, but needs a lot of power to sound right uh, when underpowered. Sounds very thin and the bass gets kind of muddy, but anyway, it's a good test of power with a headphone amp. And um, also the Sundara, the HE560. Um, I believe I use the um, Edition XS with this. I know I use the Ananda Stealth and I know I use the uh, the Aria Stealth and also um, the ZMF Atrium, which is a 600 ohm headphone. And I um, also used a couple of Kennerton's headphones, I believe the Woden and the Odin when uh, listening to this. And um, so getting into the sound, basically I would say the sound of this amp is just a little bit on the warm side of neutral. Uh, to be honest, it really uh, doesn't have a... Uh, a real what I would call tubey sound. It is a hybrid um, type amp. It does use tubes in the input stage, but it doesn't have the sound of a full-blown tube amp. It sounds more like a Class A solid state amp. And um, if you use Class A solid state amps, you know that they're usually a little bit warmer sounding than um, like a Class A B. But, um, so it's a little on the warm side of neutral, but it's, it has a very clean sound. Very clean, very detailed, very high resolution, and um, just nothing weird about the sound. And, um, but like I said, it, it, it's very clean with very low distortion. Um, you're going to hear all the details and... It's going to be hard to find an amp that's actually more detailed than this one. Uh, I did compare it to, uh, looks like four different amps and amp DAC combinations. And I'm going to start out with uh, the Felix Audio Echo, which happens to be a full blown tube amp. It's actually an OTL type of tube amp, but it uses tubes in both the input and output stages. And uh, the Felix Audio Echo is actually, um, when I did my year-end reviews of, uh, about a month and a half ago, that was actually my pick for my favorite under $1,000 headphone amp. So it's an amp that I really do like a lot. Okay, I compared the two, 
And, um, and the reason I did, I chose that, is at a price of $9.95 for the, um, for the Mark II version, which now has three sets of inputs. My Echo is actually the original, um, the version one, and it only has one set of inputs. Okay, and that sold for like about, I think, $675. Well, now the price is higher at $9.95, but now it has three sets of inputs, which makes it more similar and more, you know, um, competitive with this amp. So, anyway, comparing the sound, uh, the biggest difference I noticed is that the Felix Audio Echo has that full-blown tube sound. It's, it's very warm, very rich, very lush, and um, I just love the way it sounds. And this amp is not, doesn't sound as tubey. And that's what I would expect. I mean, this is a hybrid tube input, solid state output amp, so I wasn't expecting it to sound as rich and warm as the Echo. But it's every bit as clear and detailed, and um, it just, like I said, the Echo just is a little bit warmer and a little bit richer. But so if that's what you want, if you're looking for the ultimate in warm, rich sound, then you probably want to go with a full-blown tube amp, such as the Echo. But if you're kind of in between and haven't made up your mind whether you want to go with tubes or if you want to go with solid state, then this is somewhere in between. Like I said, similar to a Class A solid state amp as far as tone balance. So uh, the Echo, like I said, it has that warmer, richer sound and just more of that tube sound that you get from tubes. And um, everybody knows that tubes don't measure as well as solid state and that's because of the um, basically the second order harmonic har it's actually considered distortion it's harmonic distortion but a lot of people including myself find that to be very pleasant and that's why so many people do like tubes uh, a lot of people think that it makes the music sound more natural and more lifelike more organic and, you know, I've become a really big fan of tube amps over the last year or so. Well, really a couple of years. So anyway, um, but like I said, they, they have a similar sound, but the Echo does have more of a dramatic tube sound to it. Both very clean, very detailed, and similar price. Okay, I compared this to the Fio K9 Pro, and that's the ESS version. And that is a combination amp and DAC. So you get a very good DAC along with it. And it sells for $849. And I will tell you right now that that was voted, or I picked that as my number one amp DAC of the year under $1,000. So once again, something I really like. So this amp is going up against some very tough competition here. So anyway, um, comparing the two, uh, very similar tone balance. That amp is actually on the warm side of neutral, and which I wasn't expecting because that has an ESS DAC in it. And usually ESS DACs are kind of on the dry, sterile side. Um, and I was surprised to find out that actually has a nice, um, warmish sound to it. And, um, but the two are actually very similar in tone balance. And, um, the only thing I could really pick out different is I think the VO had a little bit more weight in the sub bass than this amp does. Um, but other than that, they were pretty close. They're, um, they were pretty close in clarity, pretty close in detail. And like I said, the tone balance was also pretty close. Um, the VO is a great deal because you get a great um, deck thrown in with it. And 
Um, and then I think the power output is about the same. I think they're both rated at about two watts per channel and both handle any of the headphones that I have, including the HE560 from Hi-Fi Man, which is not only 50 ohms, but it needs a lot of current and it's hard to drive to the point it sounds right. Um, when underpowered, it sounds thin. So anyway, uh, they both have a similar amount of power, and like I said, this is tough competition because I really like that feel. Okay, next I compared this to the, uh, excuse me just a second. Spent the afternoon out uh, cleaning brush and uh, <clears throat> trimming trees, so got a little dehydrated, so you have to excuse me if I have to take a few drinks. Anyway, um, the topping A90 Discreet. Once again, tough competition. This is an amp that um, pretty much everyone that reviews it likes this. I never got a chance to hear or review the original topping A90. And there were some people, quite a few actually, that described it as sounding a little bit on the, uh, a little on the dry sterile side. Some people didn't really like the original A90 because of that. Um, I reviewed the D90 DAC and that was my complaint about the D90 and I actually prefer the D70 over the D90 because it has a warmer, richer sound. So anyway, because quite a few people, and I mean, don't get me wrong, people still like the A90 and had exceptional clarity and detail and great power, but some people thought it was a little dry and sterile. So the A90 Discreet, which I compared to this amp, um, I believe the topping tried to warm up the sound a little bit and give it a little more richness, and to me, it does sound that way a little bit on the warm side of neutral, but I'm using the D70 DAC, not the D90, and the D70 does have a warmer sound. So combined with the D70, um, that's what I'm using. I'm using the D70 DAC with both uh, the A90 from Topping Amp and with this amp, I ran the balanced output of it into the A90 and the single ended into this. And that is probably a little bit of an advantage for the A90, but I don't think it makes a huge difference with the topping decks, um, whether you use the balanced output or the single ended. I think the single ended is still very good. So anyway, um, once again, I thought this had a very similar tone balance to the A90. Um, the A90 is, um, well, I voted it as the most clean detailed amp under $1,000 that I've reviewed so far. So yes, I would say it is slightly cleaner um, and slightly more detailed, but just a very small amount, just maybe 5%. Um, the only way I would notice, um, I can't tell by memory, I have to jump back and forth really quick to hear the difference. But I would say that the A90 is just slightly cleaner sounding. And even though the tone balance is very similar between the two, I would, um, I did notice a difference with the LSA. Um, I was listening to female vocals and one that I really like to use is Natalie Merchant. She was the lead singer from 10,000 Maniacs if you're not familiar with her. And she just has an incredible amount of texture in her voice. And I love to use, um, I was actually using her solo album, Tiger Lily and uh, very well recorded and like I said she just has this incredible voice with a huge amount of texture and I did notice when comparing the LSA to the A90 from Topping that with the LSA I can hear that texture in her voice a little bit better uh, where uh, her voice has sounded a little even though the tone balance was similar her voice just sounded a little less textured and I'm 
guessing it's the tube part of this that gave that little bit of extra texture in her voice. So I actually enjoyed her voice a little bit more through the LSA. Uh, but like I said, the, the topping, it's a fantastic amp for its price. I think it sells for $5.99 and has a ton of power. I think it's rated at like six or maybe even higher uh, watts per channel. It does have more power than this, but like I said, this has enough power at two watts to power any headphone that I threw at it. And um, this does work very well with the uh, with the Atrium from ZMF, which is a 600 ohm headphone. Is it 600 or 300? 300, I'm sorry, it's a 300 ohm headphone. And, um, but it does work very good with uh, the high impedance headphones. The Atrium sounds outstanding with this amp, but I will admit uh, the full blown tube amps, either the Echo or Elise, from um, Felix Audio or the power uh, the preamp plus which is an OTL amp from uh, Waveborn do give um, high impedance headphones like the Atrium there's just this magic where they just um, they come alive and sound incredible and so if you have an Atrium it does sound very good on this amp but Try it on a uh, OTL Type 2 vamp, and you will probably be very impressed. Anyway, um, another comparison I did with this is I compared it to the Burson Conductor 3 reference. Okay, number one, that is a combination amp deck, but it does go for $1,750, about twice the price of this, but it does include a good deck. And just I would say probably like a thousand dollars of that price is probably a thousand to twelve hundred is probably in the amp and then maybe five to seven hundred of that price is in the deck. So what I did is uh, once again I used the topping D70S MQA version deck with the LSA and then I used the Burson with its own built-in deck. So by the time you add, um, you know, a good DAC like that, that DAC sold for $650, you're up to almost the price of the Burson when you combine this and the DAC. So I com compared the two, and the Burson is, um, I believe that's um, full Class A to the entire power rating, and that thing has outrageous power. It's something like seven and a half or eight watts per channel into 32 ohms. Well, anyway, uh, the Burson, which has a nice warm sound, very good DAC in it, um, actually sounded very similar. Once again, this with the topping um, D D70S DAC had a very similar tone balance, very similar sound to the Burson Conductor 3 reference. Uh, very similar level of detail and clarity, very similar tone balance. Um, I did, uh, I think the Burson had slightly more weight in the sub bass, but not a really big difference, very close, but maybe slight advantage where um, I thought the LSA had a little bit of advantage was in sound stage width, but that's probably the DAC because even though the DAC in the Burson Conductor 3 I think is an outstanding DAC, excellent clarity and it's actually got a sort of a warm side of neutral sound and it's very punchy, very dynamic, but it does lack a little bit of sound stage width compared to some other, you know, DACs, um, you know, like in the, you know, $500 to $1,000 price category. It lacks a little bit of width. So I did notice that this um, LSA with the topping D70 had a little bit more width of the sound stage. Not a huge amount, you know, maybe I'd say the Burson had like 90% of the width of this. Um, so like I said, the Burson had a little, was a little bit more dynamic, a little more punchy, a little more weight at the low end, but like I said, this combination with the topping had a little bit more sound stage width. 
And of course, the Burson has that huge power on reserve. The Burson on low gain probably has as much power as this amp does on high gain. And um, I was the last headphone I used on this was the um, Hi-Fi Man um, Ananda Stealth. And that's a fairly easy to drive headphone. Uh, for a planar magnetic, but still needs a little bit of power and I was using um, I was using the middle gain setting on this which would be six decibels of gain and had the volume knob at about probably 10 10 o'clock to 1030 with um, it depends on the recording level of uh, each recording, but um, I did find out if I used high gain, which uh, brought the volume now down to about nine o'clock. Sometimes it did sound a little bit more punchy, had a little bit uh, more dynamic sound to it. Uh, last, I just wanted to mention real quick before I did my uh, first impressions video, I did compare this to the Master 9 from um, Audio GD combined in a stack with the R8 R2R DAC. And once again, I thought this had a similar, a uh, little bit on the warm side of neutral sound. It didn't reach, quite reach the level of the Audio GD stack. It was about 90% of the way there as far as detail, clarity, uh, dynamics, all that. But it um, came close, you know, and did produce a similar sound to my reference amp and deck. So, uh, bottom line, what do I think of this amp? Okay, it's just a very nice amp. It's very clean, very detailed, and um, really has no faults or weaknesses. Um, you know, there's some other amps that are, you know, very competitive with it in the price range. I mean, the topping is um, actually lower priced, but, you know, um, and then you've got the Burson, you've got the Felix Audio. If you want the full-blown, warm, lush tube sound, the Echo will take you further than this amp does. But like I said, nothing at all wrong with this amp. Um, I love the features. It's got the three sets of inputs. Um, it's got uh, the gain control right on the front. I like the three levels of gain. And it's just got a really cool look to it. I really like the way this amp looks. It's just, um, like I said, kind of, uh, it looks different. I mean, like the topping, a million people are gonna have that and yours is gonna look just like everyone else's, but if you want something that looks a little different that's gonna catch people's attention, this uh, will, you know, fit that role and um, give you that different look. And like I said, it's just a really nice amp that I found no problems. Um, just a couple of um, small things. Uh, these lights here on the inputs, I can't tell if they're yellow or green because I'm colorblind, but they're kind of obnoxiously bright. They could dim those down a little bit. Listening to this in a dark room at night, uh, they just kind of, you know, almost light up the room. Only one of them is on at a time. And, uh, even the uh, on off button lights up. I think it's blue and it's a little bit on the bright side too. And um, the only thing I would change about this amp if, um, and it might be able to be done through tube rolling. I haven't checked to see what the tube choices are to uh, replace an E88CC. I would be happy if it just had a little bit more warmth to it. If it was a little bit on the warmer side, a little bit bassier, just slightly. Um, you know, it would sound more like a full tube amp and that might be, able, be achievable with tube rolling, but I don't know. I haven't checked into it, so I don't know if there are options. I don't know what the options are, but that's the only thing I would change. I would. You know, if I, right now it sounds a lot like a Class A solid state amp, I would prefer that it be just a little bit warmer and a little bit more tubey sounding. And is that even a word, tubey? But I'm going to use it anyway, even if it isn't. So I do like that tube sound. I really 
Um, I've reviewed a lot of tube amps lately and really enjoyed the tube sound. And I want to know I'm listening to tube amp and um, like I said, this is kind of halfway there. I, if it was just a little bit warmer, um, you know, I'll have to check into it, see what the tube options are. But anyway, just a really nice amp. I really enjoyed my time with it. And I want to thank LSA for being so patient with me. I've had this amp for over four months now and, uh, you know, but had some medical issues and, um, and I do appreciate y'all watching my videos, even though I know I don't look real pretty right now and uh, still haven't recovered. I'd say I'm probably maybe 40 to 50% recovered from the Bell's palsy. You know, I'm getting some of the motion back, but I know I still slur my words a little bit. Um, I have problems with words with a B or an F in them. Those are harder for me to say. Um, but anyway, um, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it. Um, just wanted to let you know the headphone experience on Facebook is up to 22.1 thousand members. Just continues to grow. And I did hit uh, half a million views on my YouTube channel. On this channel you're watching right now, I hit a half a million views last week. So really appreciate all of you that have stuck with me and watched my videos. And um, if I... If uh, this video helped you, please um, hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so. And once again, thanks for watching my video.